Spoiler warning for Suicide Squad. <laughs> guys, 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 how are we doing? I hope we are all ready to make our new game a continuation from the Arkham series. We have some really bright ideas and also someone new and special to help us, you know, write the script. <laughs> Trust me, we do welcome our new employee and head of everything, uh, Sweet Baby. <laughs> I think that's her name. So this is how things are going to work. The characters. With all due respect, we think Batman needs a hero's exit. <laughs> As I was saying, about Batman. Be honest, sir, Batman has made us who we are as a studio today. It makes no sense to have Wonder Woman have the heroes exit. We might as well have to. Jesus! Wonder Woman needs to be the focus of this game. Tackling toxic masculinity. This is final. <laughs> Alright, so guys, what do you think? <laughs> Why is there a hole in the wall? Oh, I get it. Someone's trying to be like Deadshot. <laughs> She's good though, isn't she? <laughs> I am not a she! I identify as... When Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League first got announced, it kind of surprised me in a way. A game about killing my favourite superheroes, I wasn't really on board. But then I thought, you know what, this is different. Their minds are going to be taken over by Brainiac. And I think this could be a very cool story if executed properly. These nuts. <laughs> This is Rocksteady, so as long as there's a good story with a variety of missions, I'm on board. And yes, I said it's Rocksteady, so there is always a reason to be excited for this game. They did market it like that. It's a story-driven game. Wait a minute! In-depth, high graphic cutscenes that I was really impressed with, and I thought they said it's a story-driven game, so I'm on board. Then we got more gameplay. It had live service written all over it, looter, shooter, grinding. These are basically the games I don't like. So I went in with very low expectation, but also a little bit of simmer of hope because it's Rocksteady. They made the Arkham games. If I wasn't doing YouTube, I wouldn't have bought the early access edition for, you know, <laughs> 90 pounds. <laughs> The cutscenes and the character models were really freaking impressive. For the most part, the comedic banter with each of the four Suicide Squad members, it was funny. They had a funny relationship between them all. And I liked the dynamic between all four characters. Harley felt a lot like Harley. Boomerang was a bit stupid. King Shark actually reminded me of Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy. But nevertheless, he was pretty cool as well. And Deadshot, well, you know, Deadshot was Deadshot. You appreciate the cutscenes, but then damn, very quickly, there was a lot of cutscenes, like a lot of cutscenes. Okay, cutscene. After this, we'll get straight I into it. it. Alright, alright, let's go. Time to die. Okay, cutscene. Cutscene, you need to know what's going on. Alright, let's go. Alright, come on, let's go. I'm ready to dive in. Let's go. Come on. He's pretty underwhelming when you get to know him. Seems you all have that. The world isn't mind-blowing, to be honest, comparing it to Batman Arkham Knight. I think Batman Arkham Knight looks actually better. Nevertheless, the world is beautiful, but what's more impressive is the details in the game. So, for instance, when you're in the Justice League headquarters, oh my gosh, it looks incredible. You can see all of Batman's tech, holograms of the members, and I just love this part of the game. Even the character models of the Justice League looked absolutely perfect. Even Wonder Woman looked really good, although I still think they could have made her a bit more sexy like the movie actress i've forgotten her name you know don't cancel me for that i'm just saying they could have made her even better no cancel that oh shit 
Here we go again. The portrayal of Superman for me was spot on. The classic Clark Kent look and of course the Flash and the one and only Batman. After the short tutorial, I actually enjoyed the gunplay. I had a very quick go of all four characters, which seemed a little bit rushed. And I quickly chose Deadshot. And I loved the long range shots of Deadshot flying around like Iron Man, trying to stay in the air as quickly as possible. And by far, he was my favorite character. I quickly got used to King Shark. He was my second favorite, being able to jump at heights with his machine gun. His machine gun felt very, very satisfying. How do I jump again? There we go. Oh my god, his machine gun is... Whilst floating in the air, getting aerial advantage from your enemies. He did feel like a big brute. Captain Boomerang took some time to get used to, but I didn't really get the same satisfaction with Deadshot and King Shark. What I liked about the game is that it did push you to kind of use all four characters in certain boss battles. You would get extra XP and bonuses if you choose that character. So it did force me to kind of stop playing as Deadshot and try out Boomerang. So for instance, when we were fighting the Flash, I played as Captain Boomerang. Although I didn't really like his traversal. And Harley was by far my least favorite i just didn't like her grappling mechanic it felt very very awkward and slow it just felt like a cheap version of batman as i got into the game and throughout the whole game i have to say the performance was brilliant it never dropped below 60 fps at all i had no crashes apart from when, when i put my ps5 in rest mode and then it would need to connect with wb servers then i'll need to exit the game and come back in but in the game i had no bugs oh, apart from you know i'll talk about that in a bit performance was smooth so that's a bonus for triple a games <laughs> You know, it's quite amazing how we expect there to be bugs in AAA games and games in general that you pay your hard-earned money for. But this was good. With the deluxe edition, I should get the Justice League outfits. I didn't get them. Yeah, I downloaded them. I tried looking online. They just wouldn't come up. I should have had a Superman outfit for King Shark. Batman outfit for Deadshot. Didn't get them. And am I going to bother? No, I, I stopped trying. I was like, forget it. I don't care even though I paid for it. As I said, there were so many cutscenes, too many for what this game is trying to be. But by far the best cutscene and the best mission of the game was the first introduction to Batman. This was the best mission of the game and you're not even doing much. Batman is what? Oh my, oh my. Oh my gosh, he's so scary. You know how it feels to be the enemy of Batman. How we were in the last three Arkham games, taking down enemies in stealth. This felt like a horror game. This is one of the best bits of the game. We better check the emergency doors. Oh! Oh! What the flip? Oh, please! Batman goes full on stealth mode. He puts fear into his enemies and oh my gosh, did I feel it. It was just an incredible mission. And all I was trying to do is escape. And because this was near the start of the game, this gave me a lot of optimistic going forward. <laughs> and then later on in the game, oh, holy Jesus. <laughs> did you say holy? Believe you and me, you're gonna need some holy <laughs> to get through the amount of cutscenes on here. No. <laughs> holy, no. no. Worth it. If it was the other way around. That wouldn't be possible. And yes, guys, I am now part of the team at Holy. These drinks are an alternative for the crap little sugary ones that you get because these are under 20 calories. And believe you and me, this is actually helping me on my cuff for my July summer body. You want to support the channel, but also help you with your fitness goals or you just want an alternative to the sugary stuff that you usually have. If you use code NEUTRO5, you will get five pounds off your first order. Yeah. Show a little class, man. That, holy shit. Congratulations. The Flash is just getting pissed on at the minute. <laughs> the if you use code NEUTRO, you will get 10% off your entire order. I'm having the caffeinated ones before my workout, and these I'm just having throughout the day, and especially after dinner when I'm feeling a little bit hungry, but I've hit my calories for the day. Oh, when I just want to get through this damn game. Not your daddy now, Shark. That goes for all of you. I'm your daddy. She the daddy. She the... She's the... Why can't she be the daddy? After that Batman mission and the start of the game, I was excited. I was thinking, you know what? There's going to be variety in the missions. There's going to be some stealth missions. <laughs> <laughs> And 
And after two to three hours of playing the game, the only thing that was really giving me the motivation to keep playing was the story. It's quite bad for a game after two, three hours. The only thing that's motivating me to carry on. The story just got boring, uninteresting, and I'm not sure about you guys, but I'm fed up with this multiverse shit. I know this game's been in development for like seven years, so they probably looked at Avengers and all of that, but I'm fed up of the multiverse stuff because there's no meaning in anyone's death. There's, you know, anyone can come back. And this is exactly the same throughout the whole game. You know, there's always another multiverse. There's, oh, there's another Brainiac. Oh, yes, this is, they don't really die. So what is the point? What the hell is going Bruh. on here? Oh my God, there is just... All good leaders know when... Can someone tell me what I'm doing? Yeah, I had to turn the numbers off when you were shooting because there was too many things going on in the screen. It looked like I was playing a slot machine. Gotta cut the power to this incubator shield. Miss the talent. What the hell is going on? But when I say the main campaign is the same thing, you do the same thing over and over again. Defend a slow moving truck and kill some enemies. Man, if it looks like a suicide mission, it smells like a suicide mission. Well, not only that, guys, you get to defend a moving truck and shoot some enemies. Not only that, guys, you get to defend a moving truck <laughs> and kill some damn enemies. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Death like, I cannot believe I did this damn mission like four to five times. I'm mind blown that this is what they did in the main campaign. Variety, just defend this damn truck. How is it even possible in a main story mission? I get it if you have to do it for some loot or some extra side missions, fair enough. But in the main mission, the main storyline, and also the enemies, there is no variety in enemies. You're shooting the same damn enemies. You counter shoot, you kill some enemies over there to unlock this purple thing. You can collect some things to then throw out the purple thing to unlock the purple thing and then you shoot the purple light. I just, I couldn't believe how basic it was and it was just nothing. The same. That literally the same. The enjoyment of the combat for me it deteriorated after three to four hours because you realize there's nothing different about the game. It really got me down because I was very optimistic and giving this game a go, I was like, you know what, let's see if this game is as bad as what people think it's going to be. Apart from the cutscenes, if you take out the cutscenes, guys, I haven't done much. Feels like there's no heart in this game. It's so weird because after I played three hours, two to three hours yesterday, I was very optimistic. I was like, I'm having a good time. Best mission so far was literally trying to escape Batman. I lost motivation so much and to top it all off, the end boss fight is one of the worst boss fights because I didn't even know it was the end mission because it was so anticlimactic. Like all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I'm fighting kind of like the Flash again. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's the end. I'm like, what? It, what? I, I, I've got no idea. No idea what I've got. No idea. Oh, I'm in a, I'm, I'm in a car now. Okay, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Just keep shooting. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Son, that must have been a version of. Oh, it's the end of the game. Just, just, just like that. Wow. But you're probably thinking, Neutro, what about the Justice League boss fight? Surely these are going to be some epic boss fights because this is the Justice League. We are fighting Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, The Flash. Well, what would Sweet Baby say? Well, Wonder Woman needs to be the hero of this game. <laughs> Why is that? She's trying to tackle toxic <laughs> masculinity. Going to put that in the damn game. Oh, I already have. <laughs> So dumb. It's so dumb, it's brilliant. No! It's just dumb! You put this in the game. Oh. Not only that, we have to destroy, and we will, 
Batman. You are joking. Harley's gonna shoot him in the head. You will piss off so many people. Oh, what are you gonna do? You're not gonna do anything. It's 2020. <laughs> you wanna see toxic masculinity? <laughs> That's toxic masculinity. <laughs> okay, this wasn't like The Last of Us Part 2 where all the marketing material and the trailers just kind of fooled us thinking we were going to get one game and then they absolutely destroyed the one character that well, I loved anyway. We knew we were going to kill the Justice League. We knew we were going to kill all of these superheroes. I just didn't understand why they disrespected mostly the male superheroes but not only just disrespect like embarrass them the flash gets pissed on and even though he was good at the start he actually saved harley they disrespect him because boomerang wants to piss on him oh wait no yeah it goes a step further they compliment him on the size of his junk and for me it's not even funny it's just like what are you doing it's it's just weird wow Take a seat. he is taking a Josh. piss on now the flash the i really do what do the hell is green lantern is literally in his boxes they're talking and he's literally embarrassed and he's in his boxes dead your friends can't be helped love flash told you either you wake the hell up and help us kick their super asses Batman, the character that made Rocksteady who they are, they decide to kill him off by putting him on a park bench and Harley Quinn is giving him a pep talk and how he emotionally damaged people, shoots him right in the damn head and they're still talking and his legs are up in the air. Utmost disrespect to their best character that made this studio who they was. You had a good run, Bruce. Flying around Gotham, punching bad guys, clean up the streets, causing long-term mental and emotional damage to everyone you know. It's our turn now. Are we done with your bad stand-up routine? Almost. But you always gotta end on your best joke. inspirational video his plan did help overcome Flash and Lantern. And I have no idea why they decided to make Wonder Woman the one who gets the hero's exit. Well, I think we can guess why. <laughs> Sweet damn baby. I don't understand. It's like it makes no sense. We didn't see Wonder Woman in any of the previous games. It would have made so much more sense if Batman became good and then he worked with them and then he died. Maybe at the hands of Superman or something and Wonder Woman was bad. But you can tell why they obviously did that because Wonder Woman needs to have the hero's exit and harley's crying about it like they had some sort of friendship i couldn't achieve anything prove me wrong <laughs> Are you serious? Superman dies from a heart attack. <laughs> but within these boss battles, oh my gosh, it was just so bad. I did enjoy the Flash one. It was very hard at first. You know, he would zip around and you have to kind of counter strike him and then he would throw tornadoes. I didn't mind it. It wasn't bad. I was like, okay, cool. This sounds good. I wonder what they're going to do with the other ones. Green Lantern has these sort of helicopters and, and all these things going about and you have to keep shooting them. And it's just so boring because the only way to beat all of these heroes is just shooting. And Batman, don't get me started. I'm thinking it's going to be some epic boss fight and it's just some sort of hallucination and you're just jumping over these things. And it is just so bad i was like oh my gosh and you're just shooting you just you keep shooting you're hallucinating but you keep shooting and superman was freaking frustrating because he was so quick don't know how he just didn't kill everyone but it doesn't make sense because it's very hard to kind of do that with superman but he's just flying around doing icicles not even that that the sound would go midway i'm trying to kill him the sound and the music just stop and he was just like okay okay 
it's very hard to do a Superman boss, but by just shooting kryptonite bullets at him and he does nothing, it makes no sense. But by far is the worst, is the ending, is Brainiac. It's literally just the flash scene again, but I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. There was so much going on screen. I, I didn't know what I was doing. Like, literally, I was like, I think we just keep shooting. Don't know how I got past it. The talent points for me, they were just weren't appealing enough. You know, 0.25 increase of an attack point. It was so minute that I didn't really care about it. I was just choosing whatever. Weapon drop and new weapons were cool I guess but again I didn't care about them because I didn't even visit Penguin and upgrade weapons not once did I do that because I didn't need to I felt like the live service aspect of the game was kind of irrelevant even though it was a live service game it didn't feel like nah I need to go upgrade my weapons now I did about three to four side quests in the game to unlock the end game mission you need currency you need Prometheus and I had to do some other tedious missions you know the car one and save some civilians and yep I had to do that and uh, to unlock the main mission you need to unlock it via currency and then at the end of it it's a flash boss fight which i had no idea what was going on and correct me if i'm wrong supposedly there are more brainiacs to fight there's like 12 to 13 i'm shocked because i saw it on another video and i was like really and they just say it's the same thing if that's true like there's another 12 brainiacs oh my god forget it you're not no, i'm not wasting my time Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League could have been a great game with a very interesting story. Although this wasn't a game that anyone wanted, if they executed it properly, killing the Justice League, this could have been just a very cool concept. The combat can be fun, that's for sure, and the first three to four hours, I was enjoying it. But the biggest problem with the main campaign is that there is no variety at all in the missions and the enemies. If you're going to have the life service aspect, at least vary up the missions, the enemies, and the most important part, the boss battle. It felt like no effort went in in terms of trying to replicate the feeling of what they made in the Arkham games. You can tell the story is made by modern day writers. Have a look at what they think of Wonder Woman. Yeah, a man of science. And a goal is to tackle toxic masculinity. They didn't care about respecting the one superhero that made Rocksteady who they are today. And I'm all for changing up storylines and characters as long as it makes it a better story. But the problem is, it makes it a worse story. They ruin the legacy of the Arkham game and they ruin their own reputation. There is no way I want to carry on playing this game because for one thing it's trying to be a live service game which it doesn't do well because there are way too many cutscenes for live service gamers to like, I would think. The weapons, the upgrades doesn't really hold any value because I got a few legendary guns and they worked with me till the end of the game but I never felt the urgency to upgrade them to look in the world for new gear and new weapons only because I didn't need to. It's a bunch of high quality cutscenes that were brilliant and jaw dropping at times stuck together to mask the long periods of repetitive missions that they have. I saved civilians, got them to the bus about three, four times. I obviously the moving vehicle, did that. And I can't believe that was a main mission. Not just one, but like three to four, even five that you have to do in a main story campaign. Some of you may say this is a better game than Gotham Knights, but I would disagree. Personally, Gotham Knights is so much better. First of all, they weren't the same developers, so I wasn't going in thinking this is going to be even better than the Arkham game even though everyone's expectations were high. At least with Gotham Knights, they respected Batman and they actually killed him off in a better way, trying to fight his way. So they respected him in that way. You could tell they went with the idea of making that a live service game. But the main story, there is so much variety in missions. There's stealth, you have to scan items in certain missions and even crap puzzles. Yes, it was only 30 FPS, but you know, for me, it was fine. When you made the Arkham games and you're the same developer, your expectations are high, especially for 2024. This is next gen and the comparison between Batman Arkham Knight graphically for me there's no comparison now I know I may sound harsh about this but listen if you like the game all power to you there's people in the community that like the game and that's great everyone's gonna have different opinions but I would give this game a four damn there's no way I'm getting back into this game anytime soon. I ain't going to get my money back. I want to know your thoughts about this video and this game. So drop your thoughts in the comments and let me know. Well, let's take a look at the comment of the day from my previous video. I started playing Suicide Squad. Shout out to Urban Way. I'm glad you bought and reviewed it for us so we didn't have to spend our hard-earned money on this crap. Are you planning to review Banisher? Thanks for the comment. Yeah, listen, I've got to take one for the team here and I always will do, even though I was so reluctant at buying this game. Man, I can't believe I bought the deluxe edition. Hey, it's a business expense. Banishing's Ghost of Eden, if I got that right, that looks like a game right for me, a story-driven game. I can't wait for that game to come out, so I definitely will be reviewing that. 